here for the 19th time. First ever meeting between these two schools. Texas 786 Division 1A wins. Michigan has the most all time with 842. These schools know how to win. First quarter, Longhorns quarterback Vince Young on the keeper. And this would be a recurring theme, 7-0 Texas. Second quarter, Chad Henney, the freshman quarterback in a Rose Bowl for Michigan, answers. Braylon Edwards, the Bolitnikoff Award winner, had 10 catches for 109 yards and a Rose Bowl record, three touchdowns, 14-14 at halftime. Third and nine in the third quarter, Young takes off. He calls his knack for making guys miss his Texas two-step, and he two-steps his way for 60 yards, a top play nominee, and a touchdown, 21-14 Longhorns. Later in the third, Henney, wants Steve Breston, and Breston's gonna get a block here and bust it to tie it at 21. Henny, the freshman with four touchdown passes, that ties the Rose Bowl record, and Michigan has come back to answer. Still in the third, and look at how much space the Longhorns give Edwards at the line of scrimmage, and he makes him pay. He becomes the Big Ten's career leader with 39 touchdown catches, 28-21 Wolverines. 31-21 Michigan in the fourth, third and goal. And look at Young, a spectacular touchdown run. How does he escape trouble here? Not only that, he gets into the end zone. Another top play nominee for Vince Young. It's 31-28. Five minutes left, 34-28 now. And Young again, he said, I was just going out and doing my thing. Look at him go, 21 carries, 192 yards, and four touchdowns. That gives the Longhorns a 35-34 lead. And so in kickoff, look what ensues. It's Breston again from the four. Gets into Texas territory. He had 315 total yards in the game. That breaks O.J. Simpson's Rose Bowl record set in 1969. Five plays later, Garrett Rivas from 42. He had three field goals in the game. And Michigan leads 37-35. So the Longhorns are down two. And here they go in the final drive. Young keeps it. And he gets Texas into field goal range. That sets up kicker Dusty Mangum for the big finish. Mangum, a walk-on senior. They iced him twice with two timeouts. He can win it from 37. Snap down, kick up. It is long enough. It is good! Good! Texas wins an amazing Rose Bowl, 38 to 37. Two timeouts could not ice Dusty Mangum. Almost blocked and... It just sneaks through. Vince Young, the MVP, Texas wins. Mac Brown said, hey, please vote for us. They did. He got in, and he won. There will never be a better ball game in the Rose Bowl than that. There may be some as good, but that has to be as good a college football game as it could be, and, and uh, it should be that way with two of the top four winning programs in college football that have never played it before. You give it to a walk-on senior in his fourth year, that got a scholarship to, to start the year uh, to win the game after being iced twice, and Dusty Mangum's done a great job for us, and uh, it's just a, a thrill for us to, to be here and, and win a game like that. This is uh, the most unbelievable season that I've been through simply because it's not the best group of players we've ever had, but it might be the best team that we've ever had because they've overcome so much. Only one quarterback, Nebraska's Tommy Frazier in 1996, has ever rushed for more yards in a bowl game than did Vince Young Saturday. He finishes the season with 1,079 yards rushing and 14 touchdowns. Tostitos Fiesta Bowl, undefeated Utah against Pittsburgh. Both coaches headed elsewhere after this one. Who'd get the going away gift that they were praying for? Urban Meyer going to Florida, Walt Harris going to Stanford, and Utes quarterback Alex Smith, well, he's probably going to the NFL. The junior expected to declare. I declare first quarter quarterback coach Dan Mullen calling the Utes offense after their coordinator took the UNLV job. He called a heck of a game. Smith to Steve Savoy to Paris Warren, double reverse. Warren also caught a Fiesta Bowl record 15 balls. A couple plays later, Utes on the board. Quentin Gather, four-yard touchdown, and it's 7-0 for America's, America's team. team, the Utah Utes. Now, the current Utes defensive coordinator, that's, fellow, that's the fellow in the middle there, Kyle Whittingham. He's going to be next year's coach because Meyer's going to Florida. Well, his team came prepared to play. Marcus Ledbetter, Tyler Palco, how's it? Utah with nine sacks in the football game. Pitt going to go field goal, try and get on the board. Josh Cummings, block. 
Mark Tail Burnett, Utah's 14 points, fewest and a half this season. But Pittsburgh shut out because, well, Burnett's got mad hops. Utah's going to become only the second major college football team since 1950 to win all of its games by 14 points or more. The other was Nebraska in 95. Palco, big heart, but when you've got Steve Fafita chasing you, you need faster feet. Hey, don't mess with the youth, bro. Smith, four touchdown passes. Play call of the game right here. So oh, boy, yeah. Warren. That's a, that's a trademark Dan Mullen call right there. Right there. And they, well, they had two coaches to throw the Gatorade on. We'll show you throwing it on Whittingham. We'll be coaching them next year. Uh, the Utah Utes, America's team, 12-0, 35 seconds. Miles will replace Nick Saban, who's headed to the NFL Miami Dolphins. LSU hoping to send its coach out with a win against Iowa in the Capital One Bowl. But it's Ferentz's team scores first, 218 into the ballgame. Drew Tate, Clinton Solomon, 57 yards. Tate, 20 for 32, 287, 7 nothing. Second quarter, 7-6, LSU punting. Or at least that was the idea. Miguel Merrick blocks it. Sean Considine scores and gets the top play nomination consideration. Final minute of the half. LSU needs to make something happen. And Allie Broussard delivers. 74 yards for the score. Tigers' biggest gain of the season. Broussard, 109 yards on 13 carries. LSU missed the extra point 14 12 Iowa at the break third quarter LSU going for the field goal coach Saban Baker Iowa not buying Matt Flynn stops short fourth quarter 24 12 Hawkeyes freshman Jamarcus Russell off the bench into the end zone to Skyler Green 24 19 final two minutes LSU with a fourth and one Broussard picking up nine in the first down Russell went 10 of 15, finds Dwayne Bow for 18 and another first down. They're inside the 15. Now ball on the 10, third and six, time short. Joseph Uday, not short of the first down. 69-yard drive over, and the game appears over as well when Russell goes to green again. LSU up 25-24. Now, Iowa has one more chance, but frankly, their chances did not look good. The game's going to end on this play. He fires downfield. It's caught. And into the end zone. Touchdown, Iowa. Touchdown, Iowa. No time on the clock. I don't believe what I just saw. Touchdown, Iowa. Oh, my God. I can't believe what I just saw. Kind of like Jack Buck in the Big Sky Box. Iowa coach is coming unglued in the press box. Tate to Warren Holloway. Fifth-year senior catching his first collegiate touchdown. He's got the yellow circle. In the red circle, Ronnie Prude. We're guessing Ronnie was thinking zone. Coach Saban said it was supposed to be man coverage. And Holloway. Get him, man. I'm just happy that we came through for the fans. You know, it was a great way to finish up my first touchdown ever, and we won. And uh, I can't. Man, I, I couldn't top it. Couldn't top it. Best day of my life. <laughs> you can't top it. Iowa wins its eighth straight game. Takes the Capital One Bowl in dramatic fashion, 30 to 25. Outback Bowl in Tampa, Wisconsin, taking on Georgia. Badgers hadn't beaten an SEC school since 1928, and they were facing David Green, the NCAA's all-time winning as quarterback. Second quarter, Green to Fred Gibson. Green threw for 264 and two scores. And a nice chest bump here. Involve the mascot if you can. That's always good for team spirit. Second half, Green deflected here and it winds up in the hands of the fullback Jeremy Thomas and he rumbles in this is his first career touchdown it's the top play nominee how about this for an immaculate reception and he's in 17-6 Georgia later where's middle linebacker Lamar Watkins there he is right there he commits to his right ends up over committing leaves the middle line open for Thomas Brown 16 carries 111 yards and the dogs are stepping on their hearts with a hobnail boot. 24-6, 24-13. Here comes David Pollock, strips John Stocko, who was sacked seven times. Pollock, this is how you win Lombardi Awards. He was Outback MVP. Georgia takes over. Green, right to the linebacker, Andy Crooks. Green threw two picks Saturday after throwing just two in the regular season. Badgers are back within three. Final minute now, fourth and inches. They're in field goal range, but Georgia will try and get the first down and kill the clock. Got to have it here, Brown. 
and he stays in bounds. Keep that clock moving. Georgia holds on and wins 24-21. Green's final collegiate game is his 42nd career victory. That's the most in NCAA history. In the Cotton Bowl, Vols have won just one of five bowl games since winning the national championship in 1998. Tennessee with a little something extra. Reggie White, helmet decals to honor the former ball grade who passed away last week. In legal flashback way back, 1957. Only other meeting between these two, 1957 Gator Bowl. Sammy Burke Lowe's first field goal of his career wins it 3-0 for Tennessee and Bear Bryant's final game as the Aggies coach. Back to reality. First quarter, seventh play of the game. Rick Clawson finds Charles Earl Baton Jr. on the short pass. And C.J., former quarterback, goes 57 yards for the score. Tennessee up 7-0. A&M committed just eight turnovers all season. Saturday, they gave it up five times. Eric Mays botches the punt. Corey Larkins recovers. A Kloss and TD pass would immediately follow. It was 28 zip at the half. Third quarter, Gerald Briggs. 18 carries, 102 yards, and this score probably our best effort of the year. Coach Philip Palmer said afterwards, the last one is the one everyone remembers. Tennessee, Tennessee, 38-7. Knowles facing the Mountaineers in the Toyota Gator Bowl. West Virginia 0-4 all-time in Gator Bowl. Second play of the game, Leon Washington. You know, Leon can't cook without that dough, baby. Hey, who's my good side, Joe? 69 yards. You're watching the longest touchdown run in Gator Bowl history. Washington, a career-high 195 yards on only 12 carries. 7-0 Seminoles. Still first quarter. That's K.J. Harris right there. Florida State blitzes. Rasheed Marshall finds Harris wide open. Harris also ran for 134 yards in the game. They missed the extra points of West Virginia down 10-6. Till first quarter, Marshall to Chris Henry. This set up a touchdown. Henry said after the game he will go pro, just a junior, but they missed another PAT, and it's 12-10 Mountaineers. Late second quarter, they just can't kick extra points, so why not try a fake? One issue, George Shell just, you know, he's got nowhere to go. West Virginia down 13-12 at halftime. Third quarter, Chris Ricks for Crofonso Thorpe. Ricks fumbled three times through two picks, but Bobby Bowden stuck with him, and it paid off. Bowden now just one bowl win shy of Joe Paterno's record of 19. Florida State wins 30-18.